What is happening, everybody? I'm Jack McAdoo, and I have a podcast. What is happening, everybody? I'm Jack McAdoo. I hope you guys are doing well. It's the holiday season, the Christmas season, for the politically correct. (laughs) It's that time of year, man, where everybody's going nuts, spending all kinds of cash that they could have spent during the year. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I went to the the mall the other day, and I was like, oh, man. I went kind of early, you know, when they opened up, and there was really no one in there. And... Normally, this time of year, this mall that is down the street from my house is packed. It's one of the largest malls in the United States, and it's normally packed, and traffic is insane. I'm sure it'll be that way tomorrow, which is the last weekend before Christmas. But normally, it's just packed every single day uh, for the holiday, and there wasn't really that many people in there. So I guess everybody's done their shopping early, which is a good thing. They were out in May getting it done. How are you guys, man? I hope everything is going well. Today, I'm going to rant a little bit. And uh, it's about Sedona, Arizona. I have been there two times in the last, I guess, three months. You know, it's one of my favorite places to go to relax and and to unwind, uh, just to chill out with some friends that have lived there for Ever, you know, over 20 years. And uh, it's just a really good vibe for me and 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 just a really good space for me to be in to kick ideas around to my friends and to absorb some information from them and then to go see the beauty that is Sedona, Arizona. And, you know, I always, I usually come back feeling refreshed. But I noticed. Oh, man, where do I begin? When I went there on my first trip in September, not my first trip, but my first trip in the last three months, when I went there in September, I I stayed at a friend's house, and I, I usually do, but there was a vibe within the town of Sedona, you know, downtown Sedona, and it had shifted. And then I, there's a few spots that I go to by myself, for myself. And one is a tree. The actual place is called Lover's Knoll. But my friends have dubbed it Jack's Tree. Because <laughs> that's where I go. That's where I feel the most comfortable there. And the vibe was different. We all have vibes. You know, what feels good to you, what's right to you. You go, what's familiar to you feels good, what doesn't. And this just didn't feel right. And then I noticed within the town of Sedona itself, traffic was different and the people were different and different in all kinds of ways, in appearance, in the way that they acted. Uh, We went out to dinner and drinks a couple of times and the atmosphere was a little different. And then I also went on social media just to kind of confirm what I was feeling and seeing. I'm like, yep. (laughs) So I told my friends about it, and they said the exact same thing. They said it is changing. Now, these are people that have lived in Sedona for well over 20 years, 30 years. And they were saying, yes, that there is a change. And to give you an idea of the change, now this is my perspective, And I'm going to preface all this by saying this. If what I'm getting ready to talk about offends you, then you are what I'm talking about. If you're not, then you're not going to be offended. 
I mean, that's the simple truth to it. But it has changed. You know, it, it, it's been probably two years since I've been to Sedona from, you know, previous to that September, this past September. And the vibe was good then. But this time I came there and I'm, now look, I'm not criticizing any people, so to speak. I'm, I'm really not doing that. I want to preface that as well because you're going to do what you're going to do. And you're going to be who you're going to be. And I've always said I agree with that. Just don't tread on other people's beliefs and where they live. But the best way to paint this picture would be that the people coming into Sedona now, and I've understood they've been coming in now really heavily the last year, is there's an attitude of Sedona is this place, this magical spiritual wonderland of Burning Man 24-7, 365. And that is what is there now. Nothing wrong with Burning Man. Nothing. Nothing wrong with the people that go to Burning Man. Nothing. But when you project Burning Man on Sedona, that type of atmosphere and that type of thinking and that type of light, 24-7, 365, it takes away from the true energy that is Sedona. Sedona has always been this place where people flock to, to, I don't want, you know, the word spiritual, just there's so much with it, but they come to find themselves or to, to recharge or to just to reflect because the energy there is absolutely amazing. People talk about vortexes. You know, the name vortex came around, I think, in the 70s. But Sedona has three major energy spots, but Sedona itself is full of energy. There's Airport Mesa, Bell Rock, and... Uh, can't think of it. Oh, Cathedral Rock. Those are the three main vortexes there. A lot of people go there expecting to feel it. And it, it's again, that's just not how it works. But people are coming there. And it's more, you know, I, I'm really watching my words here, trying, I, I don't want to offend anyone or make, you know, make it seem like I'm attacking a certain lifestyle because I'm not. Like I said, you live how you want to live. If it makes you happy, be that way as long as it's not hurting someone else. I'm all for it. But there is a sect that's coming to Sedona that have, a, that have really, really trying to establish themselves as this, these spiritual conscious gurus, and they're not. They're absolutely not. They're coming in from Washington, Oregon, and, and specifically California, and they, they have this conscious vibe and, you know, to where they're coming there, and it's just Mother Earth this, and, and it's nothing wrong with that, but it's what they're doing with it. They'll go into hikes, and they'll, they'll set up tents, and, you know, and, and basically stay there. You know, they're in the desert. They'll go out. They'll, sh they'll take a shit, wipe their ass. You know, I'm, I'm graphic, and that's it, and they'll leave it there. And, or they'll go hiking to certain spots, and, and work, what used to be pristine and clean now it looks like shit. There's trash in cups. You know, they just leave it like that. They'll go have their drum circles. And I'm not talking about the original Sedonians that, that have drum circles. I'm talking about these, these guys and these ladies that come in and they create this thing and they party and drink and, all, and, and they leave it when they leave. And there's the entrepreneurship that's happening in Sedona as well. Well, let's do this, fake this, fake that. You know, when I was there, they had the pink Jeep tours. If any of you have been to Sedona, you know what I'm talking about. Because you go where you hike, and you wonder, how the hell can these Jeeps get here? <laughs> and they've been there forever. And they're accepted because they treat the land and the people with such grace and reverence. But now you have dune buggies there, people tearing up the place uh, where you want to go and hike. People are finding out because people are posting it on Instagram and Facebook, you know, these, these sacred places and these private places. And people are posting it and telling people where they're at. And they're going with the ATVs and everything else and destroying it, ripping up the land. And you'll go to these places and there'll be lines to go hiking. 
you want to go to the restaurant at, at Airport Mesa. There's a restaurant up there, and you're backed up, just backed up in traffic for a place that you could just go to that has been an establishment that has been there for, for so long. It's different. It has changed. The energy, the vibe that once was Sedona is no longer there. And it's just not me saying that. There are people that have lived in Sedona for 10, 15, 20 years that I know that have moved out of Sedona and that are living nearby. I'm not even, you know, I don't even want to mention the towns for fear that someone is going to listen to this and say, oh, that's where we need to be. Because there is actually another town that the energy in Sedona is now shifting to. And people could say, how's that possible? Well, it is possible. The energy of Sedona is created by the people that exist in that town that has existed from generations and passed on and passed on and passed on. That's what that energy is, not just the Earth's energy that gives off a certain frequency. But Sedona's always been this magical place created by the people that live there. I've mentioned to people the very, you know, who Sedona was named after, and they, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because you came here just to be that spiritual, magical, coconut person. Because most people nowadays that are quote unquote spiritual, conscious, and everything else, that of just doing it because it's a trend, don't know what the fuck they're talking about because they're trying to project what their beliefs are on you. That's not being spiritual, and that's not being conscious. Spirituality is a thing that resides within you. There are several different modalities, and I've done a show on that, that you can choose to be part of or you can take it all in and center something in your life to where you're using a piece of it or that you find your own within yourself, and that's the main thing. Being someone else's spirituality is following them, not following the spiritual guidance that is within you. So you have people coming there, and they don't know what Sedona is. They just, oh, it's Sedona. Okay, can you go a little further than that? Well, it's Sedona, it's got vortexes. Can you go deeper than that? Most people go and they, oh my gosh, I, a lot of these people, have, I felt this, the vortex. Did you really or are you just saying that because you felt it in your own imagination? I have been going to Sedona for years, years. And I have only f truly, honestly, honestly felt the sensation that a vortex can give once. Once. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't expecting it. I heard all about it, was wondering what it was like, and then felt it out of nowhere. And it is indescribable. But there are people that will go there and tell you, oh, I, you know, I felt this, and it's just this. You know when they're telling the truth. But I talk about Sedona, and I mention where it comes from, and people, you know, they're just, what? Sedona was named after Sedona Chimbley and her husband, T.C. They came to Sedona, or they went to Sedona, and they started like a little general store, and they had kind of like what we consider like an Airbnb today. But they were poor. She was an apple grower because back in those days, apples were the thing. People would trade in apples. And there were already place, places in Sedona that were on, kind of on the map, but Sedona proper didn't have a name. So they were suggesting names like Oak Creek Crossing and uh, Schnebly Station, you know, because they needed to get the zip codes. And they said, no, they, you know, they didn't like at that time two word names so he just decided to name it after his wife and called it Sedona that's where Sedona got its name I talk about Sedona's kiss you feel the vortex you've been in, in, in you know because some some crap can happen to you in Sedona too things that are not good energetically but if you go and you have this most magical experience and you do, you're able to feel this vortex and everything else, in my own words, I call it being kissed by Sedona. But before that, the energies that were there, you know, a thousand years ago, 
It was by primitive hunters, gatherers. And they evolved into the Native, Native Americans that we know as, uh, what was it, Senegoa? And they farmed, and they traded with different tribes. And their energy still exists, their chants, their descendants, their way of life. It's still there. That is what makes up the energies of Sedona. Combined with some of the areas in the magnetic fields there that create a certain type of energy that gives off a certain vibe. And the people that truly live in Sedona, the residents of Sedona, the people that have lived there for so long, they know this. They go about their daily lives. Most are quote-unquote spiritual, good, loving, hardworking people. When I go there, I'm blessed to know these people that teach me these things and that have shown me places that the public do not go to, that don't know about, and it's very sacred to them. This last trip, the second trip I was on, was just a couple of weeks ago. We went to a place where my friend told myself and another friend, do not post pictures of this place. And if you do, don't put anything that could be recognizable and don't tell anyone where it is. That's how they are protecting certain areas. And we went, and it was amazing. The things that I saw, petroglyphs, just all kinds of things, drawings by Native Americans. And it, it was beautiful. And I, d- I didn't want to tell anyone where it was. And I did post a picture, and I asked, is this one okay? And they said, yes, that's okay, because no one would know where that is. And the people there are protective. So when I go, I'm blessed because I get to talk to them about the history. And they know more than I could ever know because they live it every single day. They live there. And we talk about it. And I'm able to go into stores that have been there since I've been going to Sedona and shop there, which helps build their economy. I contribute to them, not try to take from them. There was, if, if you've been to Sedona before, um, I want to say the name is Crystal Magic, I believe. It's a crystal shop there. And I remember I would go in there, and, and the vibe was amazing, and the people were laughing and joking, and th- there was a figure there. His name was Bob, and he was a clown. <laughs> he dressed up as a clown every single day, wore the red nose, everything. Bob! And he was just like a fixture there, laughing with people, and just because that's who he was and the people that came in there. I hadn't been there, like I said, in two years. I go in September, it's like, where's Bob? He doesn't work here anymore. They fired him. New ownership came in. They got rid of him. And the place was just, it just didn't even feel good. The prices were extreme because they were trying to make up for COVID. A lot of places are doing that. But, I mean, they were outrageous compared to what they once were. And the people were just, the, the one, some of the, the, the people that were working there, the salespeople, just rude. And it wasn't that way. That's just one example. But I will say this for them. On the second trip that I went back uh, a couple weeks ago, They had actually lowered some prices. Some of the employees that I'm talking about were not there. They were extremely helpful. Prices had come down a little bit, and I actually bought something from there. But the first time I went, oh, hell no. And I think they got wind of that. But it has changed. People are going there, and they're just setting up these, like, communes. (laughs) and That's not what Sedona is. It never has been. It just, it, it hasn't been that way. You know, yes, a lot of uh, movies have been filmed there, you know, Western movies back in the day, Elvis filmed there. Uh, Zane Gray filmed, filmed a movie there called Call of the Canyon back in 1945. John Wayne did stuff there. So it was used for that back in the day, and it was still done with respect. A lot of pioneers came through there, Oak Creek Canyon. Jim Thompson, he was the first one to arrive in 1876. 
See, there's a history with Sedona. It's just not this place where you go and you wear a bunch of beads and, you know, because you think that you're just spiritual and conscious and woke and you're going to do this. It, it reminds me of the 60s, but different. <laughs> it does. It's like, please don't ruin it. So many people have moved out of Sedona that most of the places there, from what I've been told by my friends that live there, is mostly Airbnbs now. I was told there's like 6,000 Airbnbs now. You know, Sedona, you know, it has a private player, airport. There are celebrities that live in Sedona, but they respect it. But it's just this new movement that's coming in there, and it's like, oh, no, please. And people are leaving. They're moving to Phoenix or Tucson or Taos, New Mexico or a couple of nearby towns that, again, I'm not going to mention just because I want to protect my friends. And there is another town that is kind of becoming the new Sedona. And when I say new, it's the new Sedona representing the old Sedona. The people that just couldn't take it anymore. Just like what is happening to our home. And they're moving out of it. I had a friend that came with me to Sedona because I, I, I told her that it was a magical, it was ab absolutely a magical place. But you have to be open up to it. You can't be stringent with it and everything else. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what she saw with it. But it sounded like she wasn't experiencing what was once there. And I told her a couple times, too, that it had changed. And it has. You know, and, and, and people that are visiting Sedona for the first time, it's just this tourist attraction, and that's not what it is. But it is, it is what it is becoming now, and that's a shame. To go to Sedona's grave, for instance. When I go to Sedona, I go to the grave. And it's just, it, it, it's just unreal. It's her, her husband, and her daughter in this little cemetery that people kind of pass by every day and don't even know it's there. And there's no one ever there. And it's one of those things that people that live in Sedona don't share where it is, where she's buried. It's not hard to find out, but people don't share it. They'll just take you there. And it's unreal to sit there and look at her headstone and things and just think this is the woman who her and her husband started this town. And what would she think now? Her and her husband, T.C. Her brother Ellsworth, uh, T.C.'s brother Ellsworth was there as well. See, there's history. There's, there is a history. It's not just vortexes and, and magical stuff. I was, this, this last trip that I was there, uh, my friend took, took me to uh, the Verde River. And it was the first time I had been there. And it was cold. We're out there walking around. And I had my camera and I'm filming videos. And if you're familiar with EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, they use it in ghost hunting and stuff. It's when you hold up a, a device, a recording device, and you pick up sounds. You, p you can pick up people talking that aren't there. Things like that. And I picked one up. I'm not going to say what it is because I felt that I was told not to. And, but I played it for them, and they were like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know? It was just, it was beautiful. So there's things like that that can happen if your heart is in the right place. But it is unreal how Sedona has changed. It was just this once humble ranching and retirement community that's got some American, you know, amazing art galleries. And now today it's just a full-blown place with prices through, through the roof and 
homes are getting expensive. You're seeing more private jets and Range Rovers. And it's just, it's kind of like this new age elite mystical Mecca. And it's crazy. And it probably will never come back to what it once was. And again, it's, this is not just my take. I'm just being vocal about it. But for someone that goes to Sedona often, but it had been two years this, you know, since I had been there up to this past September, there was a major, major change. And then I went back two months later, and I was there for Thanksgiving, actually. And it's different because it is a holiday. But it's just different, man. So for the ones that are coming in, if you're looking for that Burning Man experience 24-7, 365, man, don't turn it into that. Use Burning Man for what it is. It's a festival that is at a certain time of the year where people go and they celebrate it and have a blast, an absolute blast. It's an amazing experience. But don't carry that vibe into a town that has been built for years by a community that you're ruining and you're chasing those original people out. Because pretty soon, people won't want to go there anymore. And, you're tra- and, and to those people, you're trashing it now. Like I said, literally, there's trash, rubbish on places that used to be pristine. There's areas that are roped off now because people have just destroyed it. There are artifacts on the canyon walls that people are being assholes and are just painting over it with spray paint. Things that have been there for hundreds of years. And this is just recent that they're doing this. Why? So if I could stand up for my will, it's not just the vortex, it's all the energy. You know what a vortex is? It's a manifestation of fluid dynamics. (laughs) That's what it is. That's my rant. Short rant. I mean, I I can get in deep, but there is something that I have in the works for Sedona. It's in the works. I'm not going to put a time on how long it'll take to get it done, but I'm doing something and uh for the benefit of sedona but that's my rant man it's just that's just one place you know so if for those people again if you came from washington oregon or specifically california why are you going to sedona to do what you did you get run out of where you were did it become too commercialized i mean what is it why let me know Go to my website, jackmcadoo.com. Tell me. Reach out to me. Tell me. Tell me why, you do, why you're doing it. Because the reason isn't right. You know, I can't say that it's every single person going there. There's a person that I, I have followed for several years. It just it was interesting, but some of the stuff that this person was saying it it just began to be get to be to get way out there, and I was going to have them on my show, and I started thinking, should I? You know, it got to the point where how could I interview this person? And then I always do some background on the people that I'm that I'm interviewing, that I don't know really who they are, and I'm just seeing that this person was ripping people off in California. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, maybe that's the reason why, why they're in Sedona now. I thought, I can't have this person on my show. But, um, yeah, man, that's my rant. That is my rant. And I, 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 I say this on behalf of myself. I say these things on behalf of my friends. You know, these are people that have lived there for 20, 30 years that are bailing 
on the place because of what has happened and what is happening to it. And it's, it's a shame, man. It's a shame. If you're going to go to Sedona and take up space there, do it for the correct reasons and respect the place that you're going to because you left the place for some, some reason. You left it or were thrown out of it. But don't go to this place and try to create your own. And that's what's really happening. You're going there without any knowledge of the place except, oh, it's got a vortex and it's spiritual. <laughs> but you go there and then you try to turn it into your own and you destroy it in the process. If you're going to go, respect it, learn about it, and then learn how to blend with it. Not change it, because it's been working fine without you. It's this changing that's upsetting it and upsetting the people that have always lived there and respected it, just like any other town that you go to. This little, little town just happens to be special. That's all. It just happens to be special. And... It's just a place that I I love to go. That's it. Man, I hope you guys are doing well and ready for the holidays, whether you celebrate it or not, that you're ready for it. I hope that you can find peace in your life and joy in your life, no matter what modality you follow, if you follow all all of them. I hope that you find what is in what is inside of you and be that be that modality be the modality of you because that's all that matters everything else is an idea and you can take those ideas and shape it and use little pieces if you need to or use the modality to help guide your inner thought and your inner self and become that that's the most important thing Because there is not one correct and true modality for you. There's not one that is above all. They are thoughts. And I've taken some of these modalities that I have been offered and blessed to learn and study and still do. And take little pieces of them that inspire a process within me. And that's what you should be doing for yourself. Find the things that spark what is inside of you to be you. That's the bottom line, the main thing. And don't trample on other, others' beliefs and thoughts and the way that they live. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day and week ahead. I thank you for listening. Spread this. Spread it. You can find the show at jackmcadoo.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify. Wherever you can listen to a podcast, you can find my show, and I'm so grateful for that. Heard all around the world, just blessed, truly blessed. Share it with your friends. I have nothing but love for you. You guys take care. Peace. And aloha, everybody.